the upcoming videos, we're going to be building a topology like this, where we've got multiple HP Procurve switches and a Cisco router connected to the internet. We've also got multiple PCs in separate VLANs. However, before showing you how to configure this topology, I'd like to show you how you physically connect to the console of the switches and give you an overview of the interface or CLI. HP Procurve switches are shipped to request a DHCP IP address when plugged into the network. So you don't have to connect via the console initially to configure them. However, A-series switches and routers require a console connection. Cisco routers in general do the same thing in that a console connection is required to set up the initial configuration. It is also vital that you as an engineer know how to connect to the console of HP switches and routers in case you need to troubleshoot. The console is often your last resort to troubleshoot and fix a faulty switch. So it's important that you know how to connect to and configure the device via the console. To connect to the consoles of the switches, you need a console cable. These are shipped with the switches, but if you were going to site as an example and needed to configure a switch, you need to make sure that you have the right console cable with you. In HP, there are two console cables that you may require depending on the device that you're configuring. This console cable has a DB9 connector on both ends. This would be required when configuring a 5406 ZL or 3500 switch. This console cable would be required when configuring a 2610 switch or an A series 5800 or a 2500 switch. Notice one side has an RJ45 connector and one side has a DB9 connector. What some of us do is we have a single cable RJ45 to DB9, but we also have an RJ45 to DB9 converter. So this converter would be used when configuring a 5406 and wouldn't be used when configuring a 2610 switch. Just make sure that you have the right console cable for the right device. So here's an example. We have a 5406 switch and a 3500. Notice the console ports are DB9 male connectors. So a DB9 female connector is required to configure the device. So you would plug in the one side on the 5406 switch and the other side would be connected to the COM port on your PC. Now, if you don't have a COM port, I'll show you in a moment how you can use a COM port to DB9 converter. But also be aware of another issue. These switches require kettle leads that have a groove in them. Don't make the mistake of trying to connect a standard kettle lead to one of these switches. The kettle lead requires a groove for insertion. Now, if you don't have a PC with a COM port, you can use a COM to USB converter such as this. So once again, a DB9 female connector is used to connect to the switch. The other side using a DB9 female connector connects to the USB to console converter and then the USB side connects to your PC. Modern laptops these days often don't have COM ports. So this is another piece of equipment that you probably want to carry with you when configuring HP switches and routers. Now here's a 2610 switch. You can see that the console uses an RJ45 connector. So once again, you'd have a console cable, RJ45 on one end, DB9 on the other end, the RJ45 connector would plug into the console on the 2610. The DB9 female would connect to the DB9 male on your converter. And the USB would plug into your laptop or PC. Here's an example of an HP A series switch. This switch is a 5800. This switch has an RJ45 console port. So once again, you would have a console cable RJ45 on one end, DB9 female on the other end, and you would connect your laptop to the switch in a similar fashion to what I've done here. So my laptop connected to a USB to console converter, 
connected to the console cable, which in turn is connected to the switch. This is an example of a console cable connected to an HP or H3C MSR or multi-services router. So the router has an RJ45 console port. You would connect your RJ45 connector to that port and then the DB9 would be connected to your laptop. Notice routers also have auxiliary ports. You can connect a modem to the auxiliary port for out of band management. Let's say the network is down and you cannot telnet to the router. You'd still be able to access the router via its auxiliary port or aux port if you had a modem connected to this and you dialed in to the router via the modem. Generally routers have on off switches. Switches don't. So in this example, once again, here's our MSR 3020. You can see this router is still badged as H3C. We would connect our power using a standard kettle lead to the router and then you would turn the router on. So once again, in general, routers have on off switches. A lot of the low end switches don't have on off buttons. As soon as you plug the power in, the switch boots up. Cisco also uses a DB9 to RJ45 console cable, also a rollover cable, in the same way as HP. You can use an HP cable on a Cisco router, as well as a Cisco console cable on an HP router. In general, it works fine. I have had issues in certain cases, so personally, I carry one of each of these cables with me when going to site. So here's an example of an 857 Cisco router. You can see the console cable is connected to the console port. And in this example, you can see console cable connected to USB to COM port converter connected to laptop. So this is very similar to what you would do in an HP environment. Fortunately, Cisco and HP do it in a very similar fashion. Now before we can configure our switches, we need to download a terminal emulation program which will allow us to connect to the switch through the console. So in Google or your favorite search engine, do a search for PuTTY. PuTTY is a free terminal emulation program. There are many others out there, use whichever is your favorite. But in this example, I'm going to download PuTTY. So I'm just going to download the executable. Once downloaded, run the software. And notice now you have multiple options. You can connect via SSH or Telnet and others. But in this case, we're going to go for a serial connection. I'm going to leave the speed at 9600. In my case, the COM port is COM15. Now, unfortunately, in PuTTY, it doesn't tell you what your COM port is. If you're not sure what your COM port is, open up Control Panel, go to the Device Manager, and in Device Manager, go and look at ports COM and LTP, and you'll see, for instance, your COM ports listed here. I'm using a USB to serial COM port adapter because my laptop doesn't have a built-in COM port, so you can see it's registered as COM15. And that's how I know that it needs to be COM15 in PuTTY. Click Open. Now at the moment, nothing is displaying because this is connected to my switch, but my switch is not powered on. To make this easier for you to view what I'm doing, I'm going to change the settings and I'm going to go to Appearance and I'm going to change the font to 12 and click Apply. I'm not going to power on the switch. As you can see there, it's booting up. It's decompressing the image. It's initializing. I'm going to hit enter twice so that the switch can sense the speed that my console is set to. You can see the speed is 9600 bits per second. You can see that this is a 2610-24 switch. Hit enter to continue. You can see that this switch has some configuration. Its name is Access 
If we type the command show running config, we can see the configuration on the switch. Now this switch is from a lab and has prior configuration. So the first thing I want to do is erase the saved configuration. So I can type the command erase startup config. I'm going to say yes to delete the configuration. You can see the system is rebooting. You can see it's initializing once again. Hit enter twice for the speed once again. 9600. Switch is booted up. And as you can see here, the switch has a name of Procurve switch 2610-24. So the model of the switch is displayed in the default name. Now you'll notice by default, when there's no configuration on the switch, we are put into manager level or enable mode. If I type the command exit, I'm now at the operator level.